Good day everyone. We will discuss about moving all availability groups in the event of a single availability group failover in this video. Let's get started. Consider a scenario where basic availability group is implemented between two standalone database servers with SQL Server standard edition installed. If one of the availability group fails over with others remaining on the same server, that will basically cause some sort of an application outage as other databases required by the application will be residing on a different server. Implementing a listener doesn't make sense in this scenario as the application is dependent on bunch of databases and creating listener for each availability group doesn't seem practical and the application cannot use multiple listeners in their application connection string. So this is kind of an um, uh, uh, issue as far as basic availability group is concerned because um, each availability group as far as basic availability group is concerned, we can have only one database is added. So let's consider you have an application that basically uh, works with uh, uh, more than one database. Then what happens is like uh, you will have uh, more than one availability group as one availability group can contain only one database since it is a uh, basic availability group. So in this scenario, Scenario, if one of the availability group fails over to another uh, replica and uh, let's consider the other availability groups are present in the same replica then this can basically break uh, the whole application if uh, we use basic availability groups in this scenario we decided that in an event of a failover for any availability group all of the availability groups will also be failed over just to make sure that all the availability groups are, are on the same replica. So to uh, perform this, we decided to implement a PowerShell script to uh, 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 complete this uh, um, requirement. So this solution is best suited for uh, basic availability groups. So what we'll do is like we will try implementing this on um, uh, two standalone servers, JBS AG1 and JBS AG2. But the only difference is like uh, I have a developer edition installed instead of an, um, uh, a standard edition. So if you see here, we have developer edition. So uh, what we'll do is like uh, we will uh, try implementing the same solution uh, in here, but this can uh, definitely be um, easily ported to uh, any availability group. Shouldn't be a problem if uh, you end up planning uh, failing over all the availability groups in case if one availability group uh, fails over. So let's first start with um, the execution of this particular TSQL query. So in the description of this video, I've added an um, article which basically contains all these scripts. So you can uh, um, uh, take those scripts from that particular article. But for this demo, what we'll do is like we will execute this. I'm connected to JVS AG1. So I'll be executing it and same way uh, we will have to execute the script in JVS AG2 as an initial setup. Before that, let's look at the availability group configuration. So if you see here, I have three availability groups and uh, these availability groups is uh, one database each. So just for um, understanding purpose, what I've done is like I've created uh, availability group AG1, AG2 and AG3. And AG1 has database DB1 and AG2 has database DB2 and AG3 has uh, database DB3. So if you look at this, this is the um, our databases and these are the availability groups. And if you look at uh, the properties, it's an synchronous automatic failover. Yep. So what it will do is like we'll set up the solution and then we will try failing over one of the availability group here and then maybe wait for one minute or so and then see if uh, all other availability groups are failing over. So let's start with uh, executing this particular query in uh, JBS AG1. So it is completed. And uh, let's execute this query as well in uh, JBS AG2. So uh, what I'm uh, going to do is like it is basically creating this particular table and then uh, uh, storing the initial information. So let's look at this table. So if I run this, I'm able to see that this is the AG name. This is the primary replica and uh, this is the uh, database and it basically tells like role is one that is since we ran it on JBS AG1 which is the primary it basically tells that uh, the role is uh, one here 
And if we do the uh, same uh, querying on uh, AG2 server, so if you see here, it is JBS AG2. So let's execute that. So we'll be able to see that all these informations are same as JBS AG1, except the role, which is zero here, which basically points out that uh, we are on the secondary server. Let's uh, create the required PowerShell script here. First on um, your uh, uh, JBS AG1, which is your primary. Let's uh, create that and then we will do the same thing on uh, JBS AG2 also. So uh, if you look at the script here, since we are on JBS AG1, primary replica is uh, placed as JBS AG1 and secondary replica is uh, placed as JBS AG2. So let's save this one. Let's save it in uh, C drive. Let's name it as um, AG failover. And let the script name be AG failover too. Yep, this is saved as uh, AG failover.ps1. So now what we'll do is like, let's do the same thing in JBS AG2. Let's open PowerShell again here. And uh, put the uh, query that we have copied. Again, all the scripts are placed in the article that I've uh, put it in the description of this video. So uh, you guys can uh, take it from there. So let me paste it here. So the only difference here, uh, since we are on JBS AG2, we will have to change this uh, uh, primary replica here to JBS AG2 and then uh, secondary replica to JBS AG1. So let's save it. Let's go to the C drive. And then create a folder called AG failover. And save this file as AG failover 2. So if you see here, uh, it is saved as AG failover.ps1. Again, the primary replica is JBS AG2 and secondary replica is JBS AG1. Now, what we'll do is like we will uh, create an, um, a Windows scheduler job uh, on both JBS AG1 and AG2 and um, uh, advise it to run this created PowerShell script uh, uh, every one minute. Okay, so what we'll do is like let's go to tasks. So open the task scheduler. Let's close this off and then let's uh, click on uh, create task so let's uh, name it as ag failover again then um, let's uh, 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 we'll leave everything else as uh, default and then click on triggers and then click on uh, new and then what we'll do is like we will put it as um, uh, maybe like uh, we will put it as daily and then um, what you'll do is like we will uh, repeat this task every one minute let's see if it works yeah and uh, what we'll do is like um, uh, we will uh, use this uh, repeat task every one minute for a duration of uh, one J and then let's click on uh, OK. So that means like uh, uh, my, this is the it is going to run every one minute. Yep. So every one minute for a duration of one day. Yep. So that's what it is going to uh, perform. Now on the action, what we'll do, we'll click on new. And then we will uh, uh, select uh, startup program here. And then let's browse it. And then let's go to uh, C drive, AG failover, and then select this PowerShell file. Yep, there is no argument and uh, everything else is default. So let's click on OK. Let's click on condition. Uh, so um, here I'm not going to uh, select any of um, uh, these things. I'm just going to leave it as default and uh, on the settings. 
uh, everything seems to be okay let's go with uh, uh, the default and then click on okay so let's wait for this so I have this one uh, here so we just do a right click and then click on run just to make sure it works it's showing as running Okay, let's look at the history. So I'm able to see that uh, the one that I've started manually, it basically tells like it is already running, but here I'm able to see that uh, the task is triggered uh, without any issue. So it is uh, uh, running okay. So what we'll do, we'll do the same thing on uh, JBS AG2 also. Uh, let's close this and then open tasks. Let's create a task. We'll name it as AG failover. Trigger. Daily. Repeat tasks every one minute. Click on OK. Action. We'll start a program. Browse, C drive, AG failover, and we'll select this. So everything else will be default here. So let's click it. One thing that we need to be sure is like um, um, we should select uh, this particular option run with the highest privilege and um, run whether user is logged on or not that should be fine yep and you can select this one also shouldn't be a problem and then let's key in the password let's do the same thing for jbsag1 as well then key in the password let's check the JBS AG2 it is saved now it looks good let's do it let's check yep so everything seems to be good we will try uh, executing this uh, PowerShell script manually and then see if it uh, is working as expected so when I execute it, I'm getting an error stating like could not find a GBS AG2 in uh, uh, server. So this uh, procedure that is this PowerShell script requires us to create a uh, link server in uh, um, um, uh, the SQL Server Management Studio. So what we'll do now is like we'll create a um, link server here. Let's go to the server objects in GBS uh, AG1 go to link server and then let's uh, create a link server to um, jbs ag2 on jbs ag1 we'll select sql server and then go to the security and then we will select this option okay now let's create the link server in jbs ag2 Okay, so let's connect to JBS AG2 and then create an uh, link server to uh, JBS AG1 from JBS AG2. SQL server security would be like be made using the login's current security context. Okay, so let's uh, check the uh, PowerShell script now after creating the uh, link server. So it is working fine now. So what we'll do is like we will try a failover and then see if it is working fine. 
okay let's initiate a failover to um, uh, ag2 for ag1 let's do it for ag2 let's do a failover and then what we'll do is like let's wait for one minute uh, because the duration of the um, uh, task is one minute and see if the failover is actually happening or not so if we can see here um, the failover is completed so let's refresh it here and then here as well so if we see here um, so ag2 is um, um, uh, secondary in uh, jbs ag1 and uh, that is primary in uh, ag2 let's give it like uh, uh, one minute and see uh, if it is going to uh, automatically fail over. Let's uh, refresh it. Let's refresh it one more time. Okay, so now if we see here, uh, it is uh, automatically uh, failed over with this uh, PowerShell script running and it is uh, failed over everything across to uh, JBS AG2. So uh, in this video, we saw like how we can uh, use um, custom um, uh, PowerShell script to uh, fail over all the availability groups just in case if one availability group fails over. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.